taste buds. They come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds, man, yeah, they come into the Hey, Tasties, welcome to T-A-S-T-E Buds. <laughs> We're here with a great episode. We got my buddy Esoteric in the house from Czar Face, the mighty Czar Face, here to represent. How's it going? <laughs> Very smooth. I also noticed the way you hold the mic is much yeah, like yeah. a... Yeah, when I'm not on stage, when I hold it on a, you know, podcast environment. Oh, that's not how you hold it on stage? No, on stage, I cuff it, which is a... I, you, I just, the you're not supposed to do this, but yeah. that's just the, the LL know, in me. You know what I, I mean? Know. You just got to hold the... You're not supposed to because it just, it distorts? Or I like, think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah but I, I never notice it. But of course, I'm rapping at the people sure. and they're just... If their hands are up, just, everything's good. Yeah. If they're just looking, everything... Because well, that, that hold you had, I thought, looked like a, like an experienced yeah, hold. Was, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. sure. I've never I'll, I'll take. That. I do this when I'm if I'm attempting to rap. Uh, <laughs> I will tell you. I went to I went to uh, the 50th, 50th anniversary thing at Radio City. You went? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. You couldn't go. You were I, away. I know I couldn't go, but I didn't know you went. I went with Jay. I went with Ari. Just you two? Me and Ari got free tickets. We were in the fifth row. <laughs> How'd you get free tickets in the fifth row? I got a hookup. Will you just tell me how do you get it? My manager hooked it up. He knows somebody over at Radio City. Uh, Probably right, the person right. you know over at Radio City. Free tickets, fifth row. Jay had to pay for his tickets. I got. He free went tickets. to. Yeah, I missed out. Uh, I don't want to. I, I want to get. I just want to ask you it's something. It's one of the greatest Were you there nights from of my beginning life. Beginning to end, start to finish. The whole thing. I met PMD outside for me. PMD. It was one of the greatest nights of my life. It was one of the best concerts I've ever seen. I was. I was on my feet dancing for three hours. Like the, it was hit after hit after hit. There's rap, a similar rap, lineup rapper. for Rock the Bells, uh, but uh, going, I can't get to that either. I'm going to Rock the Bells. All right, I've, I've heard enough. Let's just move on. You can't go. I it's cannot you want to go. go. Rock the Bells. Rock the Bells is the day before my birthday. I'm going for my birthday. Full everything. Whole ride. Why don't you come? What do you mean whole ride? What does that mean? The we're gonna get the treatment. It's on the arm. We're getting the treatment. How'd yeah. you take that? I got a hook. Where is that one again? Forest Hills. Forest Hills. You're out of town for that. I'm in Long Island. I looked. It's a two-hour drive. I'll see what I Don't can do. Don't go to Long Island. See, what is it, the 6th? The 5th. Buddy, I'm telling you, that's going to be a day. I'll see what I can do. Please. I'll see what I can maybe, do. Maybe one of your best pals. It's his birthday. Please, come on. Anyway, sorry, E. Uh, <laughs> e. E, he just met PMD. That's why he's saying E. E, e, e. e. I've called you e, e from day one. You have. E. You have. I've rolled it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've rolled with it. I'm like, you know, Joe DeRossi calls me E. Do you not that, like it? That, no, it's cool, Jack. All right. Uh, okay. Do you remember Mr. Oh, wait, Eon? But this is what I was going to say. Do you remember Mr. Eon of High and Mighty? Oh, yeah. You called him. Do you know him? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I see. This is what I was going to say about the cup and the mic. Yeah. Some of the guys cupped the mic. Yep. And it was very hard to hear what they were saying, and it, okay. it hurt the sound. Hurt, yeah. Two guys that didn't, and I was like, this is why these two guys are masters, was right. KRS yeah. and Big Daddy Kane. Oh, yeah. You could hear every word. That's a nice, that's a nice like, shot fired at your, at your sorry. friend. Sorry. He's a professional it is, rapper. But you, but you know what? Because <laughs> rappers <laughs> love to cut the mic. Example, he's trying to, example's trying to tell you. Yeah, that uh, how how to do your job. I'm getting exactly. ready for the battle. You yes. Let me know when uh, you are you are a failed hip hop artist. I'm not failed. <laughs> he <laughs> is a literal successful hip hop artist, professional. I'm not failed. I chose to walk away. Right. <laughs> 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 I choose not to run. <laughs> Let me know when KRS or Big Daddy Kane gets on taste buds, and then we. Go. <laughs> All right. this is, this I is choose not to rap. Yeah. Yeah. By Here the way, I brought you a gift. Whoa! Yes. He comes that's, bearing gifts. That's yes. so sweet. Off of yeah, a criticism. I know, you, I know you collect tapes, so I wanted to give you. Why would you give away an original? Can I see? Ultra Frank magnetic MC's MC's critical wow. because I, I figured you'd appreciate it, man. Wow! I absolutely you know? do. I just Dude, can't believe look, you'd want to part look, with it. Look yeah. at this champion right here. It's great. This is king among men. <laughs> He's you, a good kid. You, you literally criticize him, and he hands you a gift. We're here right. to battle, buddy. That's We're how we're battling. I, you know. <laughs> so yeah, actually, that's what I'm doing. I'm buttering him up. <laughs> with the, oh, it's with a rope uh, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just did. So on my other podcast, uh, we'll see you in hell. We did a Q and A episode yesterday. Okay. And one of the questions was, name three underrated albums. My first one was Run DMC, Tougher Than Leather. My second one was Ultra Magnetic MC's Critical Beatdown. Oh, there we go. Uh, I have several copies of this album. I All think right. it is a... Give it back to me, then. <laughs> I mean, what a, what a jerk. I'll tell you what I, I, think I thought was... he was going. No. I thought he was going to name one of your albums, but we'll just, we'll just go past that. I, I, love, <laughs> I love having that. I, I love having another... I, I'm dead serious. This album is, to me, is, is a landmark 
I mean, I can't oh, absolutely. describe how much Definitely. I think it's of it. It's one of my favorite records ever. Um, from one of my favorite groups ever. That's awesome, buddy. Thank but back you. to Czarface and uh But Czarface. <laughs> let's talk about Czarface. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, sure. Let's fill up some time. I first okay, now I first heard yeah, so Czarface. You're from Boston, right? Yeah. That's where you're from originally. Okay. Czarface I was in Amoeba Records in LA when I lived sure. in LA, right? Sure. I'm um, in the I, I would do a thing where if I saw something that looked cool enough, I would just buy it. And I saw the first Czarface album. <laughs> and it had this cool, like comic booky cover. And I was like, Czarface, what is this? And it said, featuring Esoteric. And at the time, I was not familiar with you yet. And then it said, also featuring Inspector Deck of Wu-Tang Clan. The Rebel INS. Yes. And I was like, well, Inspector Deck's my favorite member of Wu-Tang Clan. I was like, I'm just going to buy this. Like, This looks awesome. He's a lot of people's number one MC. He's, ama the, he's amazing. Out of the, the Wu-Tang Clan, right? So I buy it. I put, haven't heard one track. I don't think it was streaming at the time. I th in fact, this is still when iTunes was like the thing was pre Apple Music. Yeah, I threw it in my car as soon as I got in the car because I was so curious. Immediately, I was like, it's hard. "This is a what in God's name?" And I was like, "And this other guy, Esoteric, is awesome." <laughs> and I was like, "What is this? This is amazing!" <laughs> right? Cut to so I become obsessed with the record. Then they put a second record out, and I'm like excited for it now because sure. I'm a legit fan. Sure. And I download it the day it comes out and everything. Then I do Dean Del Rey's podcast. Sure, I've done that. Let There Be Talk. Yes. Where he goes, I want to talk to you about a band that you're really into mm -hmm. and whatever at, at, when, during one segment. And he goes, who, who are you into that you feel like, you know, like maybe maybe not a lot of people know about or maybe they do, but it's like underground or whatever. And our, or, or, you know, modern band that you love, whatever it is, you know, new, cutting edge. And I said, well, there's this rap group named Czarface. And I was like, Dude, they're nuts. They only have two records out, but they're both incredible. And I was like, Spectre Deck from Wu-Tang, and this, this, this guy, 7L, does all the beats, and this guy, Esoteric, is in it, and he's awesome. And I was like, man, it's they're, they're incredible. And I forget about it. Dean <laughs> tweets that the episode comes out, right? Right. And he's like, hey, the episode's out. Can you retweet it? I go, yeah, I retweet it. I'm, I'm, I'm jogging, because it's back when I exercised, in L.A., and I look at my phone. You weren't jogging. You were like jogging, I running to pay a parking meter. <laughs> I was running. I was running. Uh, I, 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 I stop to take a breath, and I look at my phone. I open Twitter, and I got a tweet from him. That's cool. <laughs> and he's like, hey, man, thanks for the shout out. He goes, next time I see you, KFC's on me. Uh, I'll roll under the gate with you, which was a punchline to a joke I had about KFC. I'm like, yeah. This guy knows the stand-up and is no. quoting yeah, it to me. Yeah, yeah, no yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, that's how it went no down. No shit. So. so you knew who he was? Yeah, I did. And yeah. you knew his material. Enough. Yeah, so it's, it, it worked out. I was like, that's why I was like, oh, wow, when I heard it. Because I didn't hear the, the podcast as, as it happened. Somebody tagged me in it. Right. And then I, then I heard it, and I, and I was like, oh, wow, I know this guy. Dude, I freaked out. Yeah. <laughs> I freaked out. Because the thing that I've been most interested in in being in comedy has always been to get to meet people I admire and artists I admire. And I've we we meet comics. That's all you meet is comics. You're in, we're in comedy. So so when the idea of like meeting musicians and stuff that you admire, I was like, that would be the coolest thing. Because I have no link to the world. And um and you were the first ever. I remember calling my friend Jim and telling him, like, but you were the first ever, like guy that I connected to, like, artists that I admired from afar that I actually made a connection. I was like, he knows who I am. That's crazy. Yeah. And, like, and then we became, uh, we, he came to my show in Boston. Then I went to see you with Vinny Paz yeah. at the um, uh, uh, Hall, Fat Beats. Fat Beats anniversary. The 25th oh, Fat shit. Beats anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. And I was on a first date. That's right. I walk in, this guy, Tao. All the dates are first dates. Yeah. <laughs> Take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Never heard the word second date come out of his man's mouth. Take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs> uh, you leave him wanting more. It's a first roll show business. <laughs> yeah. yeah you, you left a wake of girls wanting All more. Right, hold on. Hold okay. On. Take it easy. <laughs> All right. Listen. So um, I get to Sony Hall. Tao, who eventually worked at Joey Rose's and is a, was a friend of mine from the Comedy Cellar. I didn't even know he w worked at Sony Hall. He's like, DeRosa, what are you doing here? I'm like, coming to see the uh, the Fat Beach show. I go, you know Esoteric? And he goes, yeah. I go, he put me on the list. So I'm already on the list. So I already look cool. Tao's like, oh, dude, come on. 
I got you. Takes me and this girl, gives us like the most VIP table with table oh, you service. Must have right? felt amazing. I'm like, I look like the man right now. He goes on stage, shouts me out <laughs> from the stage. <laughs> and right? there wasn't a second date. <laughs> then brings us, there was a second date. <laughs> then brings us backstage after the show. We're hanging out backstage. We're meeting the other rappers. Then he goes, I heard there's an after party. Um, with Dela, and I go, yeah, there's a Chappelle thing happening. He goes, it's the same thing. I go, oh, cool. So we go, we go in. She sees him talking to De La Soul. She sees that I know Chappelle. I pull her aside at one point. I go, it will never be like this ever again. <laughs> <laughs> it was the craziest night. Right. But that was the night where I was like, I, I like. I was like. I felt like you and I became. We, we were friendly, but I was like, we became like friends that oh, night. Absolutely. And then you took me with Static Selector. Yes. To that bar, and we drank. Yes. And I felt like he didn't like me very much, but oh, we sure drank. He, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure he, he's a great guy. I'm sure he liked you. I don't know. I don't all right. Know all right I don't, cool. I wasn't paying attention to your chemistry. I was paying attention to your chemistry with the girl, we, which has <laughs> since fizzled. I think. <laughs> <laughs> we we haven't spoken. Uh, no, no, it, it didn't. It didn't move forward. But we Chappelle, had a, De La Soul VIB treatment. It was all nuts. that couldn't pull it off for you, huh? It was. <laughs> <laughs> I need a lot of assists. I need you a lot of assists. You need to dig up Richard Pryor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like uh, Ted McKinley on you Happy need to Days, be, uh, yeah. and then and then get DJ uh, Cool Herc, and that yeah. would have done it. Maybe. Yeah. Um, but it was it was wild. But it, but we've been we've been friends ever since, and like. You know, I, I don't obviously I don't say it because we're friends. I admired him before we were friends. But sure. Just the the work this guy does, man, in and outside of Zarface is just truly, truly incredible. I, I every I time love that aesthetic, somebody man. asks me who, who contemporary hip hop do you like, that's you're the first group I say I every time. That. Every really single time. That. How did you? Yeah, um, you. I'm, I mean. Excuse me that you've been probably asked this a billion times. That's but right. How did you come up? Uh, how did you get into this? How did you come up? And how did you link up with Inspected? Um, well, we uh, we made a record with Inspected Deck in like '99. See, I was a we had a we were a duo, Seven L and Esoteric. I was the MC, Seven L was the DJ and producer, and we wanted to do. We had the same manager as Deck. Not okay. the same manager as Deck, the same guy who worked at Loud Records, which was Deck's label. Okay. So he could connect us with Deck that way. Okay. And then uh, we asked him about a collaboration. Collabs in 98, 99 were a little more rare than they are now. Mm. You know what I mean? So right. we were able to get that done, record it in Brooklyn one day. Deck came through with Street Life and a couple of other guys. Oh, wow. And, yeah, really? Yeah, he was open to it. He was cool. And yeah. Then, oh, yeah. He was very cool, man. We just we ordered a couple pizzas. We sat down, uh, you know, surrounded by vinyl at my man's studio. Like it was a makeshift studio at the time, and um, yeah, Deck came in. He we ate pizza. He wrote his verse in about seven minutes, and just went out and recorded it Damn. in about thirty seconds. And I, I just, I was just in awe because I didn't know him yet. You know what right. I mean? He was still a hero to me. Right. He's still, you know, one of my favorite MCs ever. But at that point, this was, you know, not my friend. This was right. like an idol. You right, know what I mean? Yeah, right. And uh, so we recorded that in '99, and then years passed. We kept in touch. We shopped beats to him, and he get, he sent some verses for just some you know more underground stuff. And then Seven L had this idea like, hey, why don't we do a whole album with Inspector Deck? And I said, you're crazy because that's never gonna happen. And uh, but Deck said he was down. He's down to do an album. So then, Damn. then was he now? Now let me ask you: yeah. Was he down to do the record because he was like, hey, I had a good experience working with you guys that one time. Like, so why not? Or was he like, no, man, I'm I'm like into you guys. Like, let's do this. Like, uh, yeah, know? I feel like <laughs> well, I feel like the, what if it's the former? I, well, I, I think either is fine. I feel yeah. like he's but, saying, you I feel know? like you're saying the same thing. Yeah, 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 right. You're like you said. Did he want to do the record because you're did a good he, guy or because you're a good rapper? No, did he know you? I guess what I'm asking is, is did he know the work you guys were doing outside of the song you collaborated on? Do you yes, know what I'm saying? Because like, we were able to keep in touch throughout the years. You know me, what I mean? To me, that's huge, right? You're talking yeah. about your idol who's now like, no, I familiarize myself with your work now. Yeah. That's and crazy. like, let's do this. Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So he, he knew my, my my prior work. You know what I mean? Yeah. He knew my name was heavy in the streets. You know what right. I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, and uh, we were able to uh, come up with, we, we made a couple songs. And then I was like, wow, we got to start coming up with an, an idea, a name for this group. And Dex suggested uh, the Bomb Techs. Like bomb technicians, which sounded cool, but it, to me it sounded like a little bit 
two nineties for, for what we were trying to do. Right. And uh, I, I just had this idea for a character as to lead the, lead the charge. You know what I mean? Sort of like Eddie with Iron Maiden or whatever. And, and, and um, we came up with our face and it just became this uh, thing that I could engage my son with as I'm raising my son. Cause he'd be in the back of the car while I'm listening to beats. And he's always like needing something. Cause he was four or five at that time. And to get him to kind of, listen and play along and let me kind of listen to the music and create rhymes as I'm driving, I'd have to tell him, oh, this is like the Magneto beat or the ultimate nullifier beat or the, the just the, the Stormtrooper beat because he loved all the Marvel, DC, mm, that's Star so cool. Wars stuff. So as long as he could engage with the music under the, the identity of like the Green Lantern track or something, I would be able to work that's on the awesome. music. And then I was like, wow, we should do something with like this superhero character. And then Zarface came about. That's so cool, man. It's very, very cool. And all the, you know, it's, it's the music itself, like, you know, the things that hooked me early were like, there, there was, it was like this, they're, they're sampling the right stuff. And when they're not sampling the right stuff, they're making things sound like they're sampled, yeah. which uh, to me was a brilliant approach. No, we can make it sound like we dug this off of some old record. We're just going to EQ it in a certain way and which is brilliant. And then, all the all the snippet and interstitial stuff, like they they sampling like old wrestling promos and like that's so you know like YouTube toy collectors and stuff like that. Like yeah. I I just was like, man, these guys are like scratching all the itches Love it. here. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and I think a lot of the stuff that we all came up listening to, like Bomb Squad production from Public Enemy yep. or, or you know said G Ultraman, all those had littered little sound bites into the music at the time too. And those are some of the things I. I call right back to and stuff that I loved growing up. So sampling a random thing from YouTube from, you know, an obscure toy review or something, it, it's flavorful for me. It engages yeah. me. Well, and, you know, not it, that I listen to my own records, but once once the record's done, it's out and I don't listen to it back. I can't stand the because I'll always find an imperfection with it. Sure. So I just let it go. But but it's creating it, it's fun. Sorry. No, no, no. Don't be sorry. The bomb squad stuff, the approach, you know, I'm a big uh I'm a big Zappa fan. And like Zappa He's got a lot of records where he does this. And the hip hop albums that mirror what I'm the technique I'm talking about, I always called it sound collage. Like it's a barrage. You hit play and it never stops until the last note. There's never a moment of silence. Yeah. And like so PE does that on especially Fear of a Black Planet. Yep. Uh Dre does that on the second NWA record. Yep. Uh he does it on the chronic. Um you guys do that. Where it's just like Zappa, we're only in it for the money is the best example. But like Zappa would take people, and he would he would he, he's got these weird interstitials where he put a microphone inside of a piano, and he would tell his friends he would go go sit under the piano and just sit there and talk, and he would record it, and then he would just take snippets from the conversation and put it with sound effects, and it would be like and this weird thing, and, and then that was exactly the same thing you guys were doing where I was like, Oh, it's like barreling out of this song into this weird clip of a guy that's on YouTube talking about some action figure. Yeah. And there's been a few you times know? where they've actually, they've been connected to it through somebody. Hey, these guys sampled your voice and they you no know, the, the people were thrilled about it, you know? And then all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, yeah, let me send you the record. And it just becomes a relationship that way. And well, the thing on the first record that killed me was you go, <laughs> You go, uh, I'm watching Jim Gaffigan with the fattest grin, and I was like, oh, yeah. this guy likes Jim Gaffigan. That's funny. <laughs> oh, I love And then, <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> I was like, that's such a weird reference in a rap song. This is so crazy. These guys are like comedy fans, I guess. And then you reference yeah. Segura, yep. and then Segura shot the video with you, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. much more recent. That was, was more recent. That was maybe 2018, 19, yeah. maybe. Yeah. It was right before the pandemic. Um, what, it was a track from the what the third album though. Yeah, third or fourth from the the odds are against us. Okay, the the song the track was called Bizarro, and uh, I said uh, something about Sakani Azura, catch me on your mom's house. What up, Tom Segura or something right. like that? And that led to uh, you know Tom just being really cool and and uh, being down to be in the video, and then we wound up putting out uh, a Zarface Azura Sakani Azura with Sakani. So that line kind of oh, that's so cool. It kind of built two relationships, and it didn't, you know, it wasn't intended. It just Azura and Segura rhymed. So it was a convenient situation. And you, and you connected with both of them <laughs> off that one line. That's wild. Yeah. Damn, <laughs> that's crazy. Right, yeah, it was just one of these things. And then 
uh, you know, Tom had brought us out to do a, a show in Austin, and uh, we wound up performing there, and it was it was cool. It was great. Yeah, I you saw know? that. I saw yeah. the 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 backstage stuff. Yeah, from Austin. That's very cool, man. Yeah, that's yeah. very very very. Who cool. Who else did you come up? I'm trying to think of in late '90s. I was listening to some underground stuff. Um, I'm just trying to think of the name, like Cage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cage. Yeah, yeah. I know Cage. You know Cage. Yeah. Copyright, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I know those guys. It's been a minute because I, yeah. I got into High and Mighty. A friend of mine knew Eric. I guess, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, Eric uh, Meltz. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, High and uh, Mighty's great. Yeah, I Cage, did. Are they Canada? We're no, High, Philly. No, yeah, Philly. High Mighty's Philly. Philly. Yeah, man. Are you from I Pennsylvania? Thought, dude, what's going on here? Big sports guys. I thought too. Cage, I Deuce. thought those guys were from uh, like the Toronto scene with like sl Smut Peddlers and all them. I so Smut Peddlers is them. Yeah. Wait, Smut Peddlers are Philly? Well, well, it's Eon. Yeah, it's Eon and Cage, right? Or no, who yeah. is it? I yeah, think Cage. So. That's right, Cage is Smut yeah. Peddler. But I, I didn't know they were Philly. Yeah, I thought they were from like. But that I mean, whole I think when they're making swollen those members, you know, their swollen members is from Toronto Vancouver or Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, that's go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, though, is that the crop of people like that? Were like, yeah, 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 yeah. We're yeah. all, I guess, from the same class, same age group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and are they are those guys still still doing it? I my, think so. Yeah, 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 I think so. Uh, um, Folks, game time, game time, game time. I love going to events. I like going to events without a big commitment in advance. I like making last-minute decisions when I want to go to events. I want to know I can get the best tickets available at that time in that last-minute moment for the event. That's why I love game time. That's what the game time app does, and I think... A lot of people fall right under the same uh, scenario for you. You can Absolutely. buy tickets to your favorite events last minute. They guarantee the prices. You can see where you're sitting directly from your seat. They have flash deals. Um, literally comedy, sports, uh, you know, concerts. They have every kind of thing. There's event cancellation protection. Mm -hmm. um, there's just no reason not to try it, especially if you're looking for something to do. And a lot of times we associate getting tickets. Oh, we don't have them. The things tonight, we can't go. Not with Game Time. Also, Game Time Guarantee. They have a Game Time Guarantee. That means you're going to get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less money, Game Time will credit you 110% of that difference. So here's what I want you to do I want you to snag those tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use Taste Buds. That's the code for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code Taste Buds for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. guaranteed. This this show is sponsored by BetterHelp, <laughs> folks. I love BetterHelp. I've had times in my life where I have felt uncertain, where I felt that my footing was not firm, where I felt that the ground underneath my feet was not stable. I mean. That's how I feel every single day, and especially in our profession, you're always uncertain about things, about your path forward, making decisions around your career, your relationships, anything else. Therapy actually helps you stay connected to what you really want and helps you navigate life, right? I want to speak from the heart here. I have my hand in many different types of work, mm -hmm. different types of businesses. None of them are what you would call traditional or, by definition, stable and I can't tell you the comfort and assistance that BetterHelp has brought me through my conversations with my therapist yeah. in allowing me the convenience to speak to him when I need to and allowing me the access to a person that can help me when I need it and allowing me to figure out how to focus on problem solving instead of focusing on the problems themselves. You heard it's it here. Look, really and wonderful. you guys, if, you, if you're our fans, you know that we need therapy. So... That's a loud endorsement right there. Yeah, if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule. Fill out the brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, and switch therapists anytime, no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash TasteBuds today to get 10% off your first month. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P. BetterHelp. B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P. Dot com slash taste buds. If you're listening to this right now and you are in Nashville, I am here. I'm playing the Opry House tonight with the guys. <laughs> ImpracticalJokersLive.com for tickets. Tomorrow we will be in uh, the Gamebridge Fieldhouse in Indianapolis, and we're rounding it out Saturday at the Stifle Theater in St. Louis for two shows. Grab those. But I am back on tour after that because I'm filming my special in Chicago in December, and we are going to be at the Hartford Funny Bone, the Syracuse Funny Bone, the Albany Funny Bone, all by September. And then we're hitting Bowling Green, Kentucky, Cincinnati, Toledo, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, Wilmington, 
Macon, Georgia, which I was corrected about many times. Savannah, Athens, Georgia. I'm coming through you. Mount Pleasant, uh, there you go. And then Peoria, Rockford, Cedar Rapids, Springfield, Illinois, Duluth, Minnesota, Appleton, Wisconsin, which just went on sale. So you get those tickets. There's still good ones. Rochester, Davenport, and Elkhart, Indiana. They're all on sale right now. They're all going to be before the end of this year. SalVolcanoComedy.com for tickets. And you know what? Check out some Hey Babe and uh, some Taste Buds merch on our website. We got some good merch, so you should go there if you're a fan and buy something. Don't be... I have got a big fall tour coming up. Big venues, big shows, big fun. Avenal, New Jersey, September 16th. Toronto, Ontario, September 21st through the 23rd. November 11th, Philadelphia, PA, my hometown at the old TLA. Oh, classic. November 17th, Pittsburgh, PA, Bottle Rocket Social Hall. November 18th in Buffalo, New York. November 30th, Denver, Colorado. Defe December 1st in Phoenix. December 3rd in Salt Lake City. And more dates are being added all the time. Go to JoeDeRosa.com for ticket and venue information and ticket links. I want to see you out there, please, people. Also, guess what? The album, Salsa Windfall. Artificial Birth, available everywhere on August 1st. And if you want to buy it, you can go buy it over at Bandcamp. It's dropping August 1st on Bandcamp a little early, so you can buy it at a discounted rate, and then it hits all the digital streaming platforms on August 4th. I know you've been waiting for it. I'm excited about it. I hope you are, too. Salsa Windfall, Artificial Birth, hitting those streets the first week of August, right in time for my birthday. Also, if you're in New York City, please come to Joey Rose's. We're open seven days a week, starting at 11.30 a.m. every day. You love those sandwiches. You love those drinks. Why don't you love them together at Joey Rose's? JoeyRose'sNYC.com. So uh, in that uh, era, I think, is when we were all kind of sharpening our, our swords. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. And, and um, I think now I kind of... Uh, I got a, a Wolverine adamantium type of. Uh, I'm trying to transition. <laughs> <laughs> you you know, you I try. <laughs> That's very good. No, we're battling. Yeah, yeah we're battling Wolverine versus Batman. I, Dude, I, I am mighty. I'm, I'm sorry. Go. go. No, no, go ahead. No, I'm just remembering one of their albums. It might have been the second album, but I think they got Eminem on a track. Actually, yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was that era when Eminem was just it was just be breaking before he was Eminem. Eminem, yeah. but he was still like. Eminem, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think and, it's, uh, and it's a law, like back then it was anyway. It was a law, like all, all the other white rappers are like, who the fuck is this Eminem guy? You yeah, know, yeah, everyone yeah, was yeah. like, Eminem, yeah. Eminem. And then you hear Eminem, oh, okay, all right. I still, and, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 no please finish. Oh, I, I, I was just saying that they, yeah, they managed to do a, a joint with him right before, or maybe it was during the Dre, right? But before the album came yes. out, you know what I mean? And, yes. And he was, a, he had a. Did you have a cross pass with him? Yeah, yeah, actually, I met him the first time i met my wife oh, it no sounds shit. funny yeah it was the same same oh, wow. night different spots but they were doing a lyricist lounge tour in boston mm -hmm. so I, I remember the exact date because i have the stub from the show and i was at the show so that was it's it's a way it's a funny thing because it's like okay i met my you know andrea yeah, that time great. you know and yeah so i met eminem yeah and the only thing i had on him was height you know what i'm saying and, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because Something. i saw yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any man, right? I think that's the high and mighty Eminem song. Any okay. man who jumps inside of a minivan. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I think yeah. that's I know the that high and mighty song. Yeah. I don't and know. I remember. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but but uh, I uh, saw um, traded their house for an eye size. Word to my I left ear. I sound like, I'm like the bulls of next year. I love that. I got you guys uh, rapping, man. Looking more what like the from them fried guys. Go uptown. Yoritas eating Taco Bell saying, Viva gorditas. <laughs> Fuck all your dogs. I'll give them rabies. They never had a chance to like my two aborted babies. Yeah, all right. Got Pope John Paul II praying to Satan. Got your vegan girlfriend cooking up bacon. <laughs> is that Eminem or is that Mr. Eon? That's Eon. And okay. M comes in right after that. Okay. Oh, that's what I was going to say. I remember the first time I saw Eminem, I was, I was still rapping. I was in college and I was still trying to, I thought that's what I was going to do. And, um, I saw the video. I was away. I was a theater minor. We were away at a theater conference for theater kids, and we were in the hotel room. We had MTV on, and the, the My Name Is video came on. And I remember I was so mad because I was just like, <laughs> "Dr. Dre co-signed this bullshit." <laughs> what is it? Because because it was such like a comedy song. <laughs> and then my friend was like, 
yo, I got the album. He's no joke. And I was like, that's yeah. like a joke. It's like Weird Al shit. And he was like, no, no, <laughs> trust me. And then he played it for me, and I was like, oh, wow. You know, it's <laughs> crazy that that's it's, the song that broke him, right? Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's yeah. like nothing else sounds like that. No, no. No, and it's it's um, sometimes it takes somebody like Dre to, to really – put you through the glass ceiling and obviously he shattered the, he's on another yeah, planet yeah um but yeah at that time a lot of people were scratching their heads like you just like what the f you know, as soon as it, the second album hit yeah. and i heard kill you i was like this dude is a is one of the greats i was like this yeah. is nuts how good he is yeah. but he but oh prince paul speaking of <laughs> he, he sent me the cassettes okay shout so, out to prince paul so let's give them just a little thing he didn't yeah. see that we had Prince Paul, legendary hip hop producer, uh, Prince Paul on the cast, and then Joe <laughs> was telling him how he used to rap, and then he he requested of you to send him. He said some you got to send me. Well, he didn't want the legitimate rap. He wanted the comedy rap I did that was sex rap. Uh, the band was called Deep. Okay. And he said I will send you a box of cassettes if you send me a signed copy of Deep. So I texted him. He got. He sent the cassettes immediately. He's awesome. He's the we man. We love you. Yeah, and I was like, "All right, Paul, I, 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 I'll send you the CD." I was nervous because because I said on the show, Dude, the, <laughs> I wouldn't have sent it. I, I was it's nervous. Prince Paul. I, <laughs> I know <laughs> it's royalty. I was. It's the guy. Scared it's... to send it for that. I was scared to send it because I was like. This is that some, bold, something man. that would get me, like, in theory, could get me. It's like but, but, but it's he, harsh but humor. He, but he's what? What could he it's have really said? To you? I dirty. wonder if what he said. I want to know so, if it's. So let's see what he said. I signed it in. I signed the CD in character. Okay. <laughs> I signed it as the two characters I played. I autographed it. I I taped <laughs> an Ace of Hearts card to the front of the CD, and I wrote on it. I wrote. To to the to the prince, uh, you know from or I don't know from to the prince or the king or so, whatever the said. And then I said, uh, I said we stopped chasing hoes long enough to sign this CD for you. Love, uh, Jay Beto and Bernard, which is the two characters I played. And then I sent it to him, and I was and I texted him, and I go as promised. I sent you the CD. Nice. It is autographed in character. Please do not get me canceled yeah. because of the content. It was done in great irony. It's You're supposed to be funny. You're worried about the cancellation? Right? I'm worried about his opinion. So then he texted me back immediately. He goes, dude, I'm too old to get anybody canceled. Don't worry about it. I go, all right. He goes, and then that was it. And then and then I was like, by the way, I love the cassettes, blah, blah, blah. Wait, wait. So he didn't respond about listening to well, it? I'm, I'm getting to it. Oh, okay. Hold on. Oh, you're taking Pump a you're taking a scenic route? Breaks. You're taking a scenic route. <laughs> We have a battle to do, man. <laughs> Land the plane, Joe. Land the plane. He likes to get he likes to get lippy when there's a guest. He likes oh, to show up oh, for company. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so then I want to hear about SO. A week yeah. later, he, later he texts me. Yeah. And he goes, "I got the CD." Dude. It's all exclamation. He's like excited, and I'm like, <laughs> "Okay." Uh, he goes, "Listen, I got to hit the road for a couple weeks, but I'm going to listen as soon as I get back." I go, "Okay, cool." In my head, I'm like, "Please just never listen to it." Please just never listen to it. Dude, a full month and a half goes by. I'm like, not only has he listened to it, he hates it. And he's not and maybe he is gonna get me canceled. Right, I don't know what's right, going right, on right, here. Right. right? And I was I swear on my mother's life, the day I was about to text him and I was gonna write to him, Paul. Your silence means one of three things. <laughs> Either A, you hated it, B, you're going to get me canceled, or C, you're so blown away by the quality, <laughs> you can't figure out how to say it. The day I was going to send that text, my phone buzzes, I look, and it's him, and he just goes, yo, the CD is mad funny. And I was like, Paul, I got to be honest, I'm very relieved that you just wrote that to me. And he goes, D bro, thank you for the laughs, man. Yeah, it's funny, man. And I was like, I'm glad we could make you laugh. When are you in New York? He's like, I'm coming up in, I think, August. Like, let's, you know, I'm like, great, cool. I hope to see you, man. Yeah. And that was it. So all went well. Okay. I'm not going to get signed over it, mm. but. You're not going to get canceled. So. I'm not going to get canceled. <laughs> yeah. And he laughed, which was the point. It was supposed yeah. to be funny. He uh, laughed. That was the key. I yeah. credit him with keeping us on a path of making music. So in 96, we went to Rocksteady Park for Rocksteady Anniversary, and Prince Paul was there. And I had the audacity to hand him our record, vinyl at that time. I mean, we're still doing vinyl now, obviously, but it was like a 12-inch. 
and I gave it to Prince Paul and had the 800 number to call us on the label. And I was like, I'm like nervous giving it to him, you know, and he, he'll never uh, respond. But the fact that he's taking it from me means something. Sure, sure. And then he, he called on, it was a, like a beeper thing where you could leave a voice message at that time. You know, just an 800 number to leave a voice message. Yeah, that's yeah. how I went. And he left the message. He's like, yo, I checked out the record, man. It's dope. And I'm like, that's Prince Paul's voice. And he how did cool it. And that? did you 96. take that and throw it on another record? Oh, I wish I still had it, man. It was it, it, not, like 96, 97. Yeah. You didn't have that technology, I don't yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what's weird, though? Yeah. In the box of stuff he sent me, that was shoved in there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we put him right here yeah, to a lie detector test, he probably wouldn't remember. <laughs> but uh, in the, in the, he said, he goes, story, he goes, he just shows how much of a great guy he is. Because yeah. there's going to be some bad stuff in that box that I sent you. And I was like, oh. how bad could it be? One of the things was the Mo Money soundtrack oh, really? on cassette. <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah, you were, there were a couple doozies in here. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's great that he called that's you. Funny, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah. The uh, S-O-E, esoteric, Tarek. <laughs> Maybe you just call him Rick. Rick. Uh, <laughs> he's the man. He's here today. We're here to battle. Uh, we, we, I knew he was a comic book guy. I put my foot in my mouth the other day. I texted him and I go, you want to battle a comic book thing? And he goes, yeah. I go, DC Marvel would be good. I go, because bro, I hate Marvel. And then he doesn't respond. And I'm sitting there and I go, oh, he did a comic book with Marvel. Oh, shit. I should have said you hate that. Him. I should have said that. <laughs> then I remembered that they did a song on the Venom soundtrack and i was like oh shit yeah that's right yeah. i was like god damn it and then i start texting him i'm like dude i was just kidding uh, marvel i like the comics some of them <laughs> <laughs> well you know how it is sometimes you just don't have your phone ready to go and then it happens to me too i'll text somebody and then like a day i'll go by i'm like what did i Sorry. oh dude Re every day all day that's my reading life. the text i'm like what yeah. the I couldn't have offended anyone. That's why I started leaving voice notes because you can hear the inflection. Yes. You can know it's coming yes. from, you know what I mean? Like, oh, that's all we do is voice oh, notes. Oh, good. All right, cool. Oh, bro, bro, I'll start yeah. loading you with the voice notes, oh. man. I hate yeah. don't and open then I can that sample box. them and put them on a record. Huh? I said, don't open that box. We, we try to beat each other's record of length of, of messages. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, I've left him a voice message <laughs> that was like 14 minutes. <laughs> yeah, he texted me once. At some point, you're like, why are we talking? Yeah, but. He texted me once for, uh, for when we first started doing it. We he was always, legitimately we excited. He goes, bro, I'm in a Walmart, but I can't wait to get in the car and listen to this four and a half minute banger you just <laughs> yeah, said. Yeah, I think it was like during COVID. <laughs> oh, it was like it. during COVID and I was like, we would just be like, oh, four minutes. It was like you had an episode of TV to watch or something. It's like, <laughs> oh, oh I got a four minute message. <laughs> so good because some people are so hot and cold with. I with, know. Yeah, that's, you should do a, a, a voice message versus text message type situation. Did we do it? We did text oh, oh, did versus uh, phone call. Text versus oh, okay. phone call. Yeah. All right. Team, text one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> text one. Uh, but uh, we. Uh, so you threw out a bunch of things. You threw out like Marvel versus DC, Justice yeah. League versus X Men, like what what have you. But yeah. then you threw out something I thought was even cooler because it was more pointed. Yeah. And that's today's battle, which is who is the bigger badass, Batman and Wolverine. Which I think, if I'm just thinking of in the Rolodex of superheroes, they're at the top of the list of badasses. I mean, yeah. Punisher maybe. It's. Um, it's the everyone's two, a badass, but you know, like yeah, yeah. it's the two guys. It's like two guys that are in their forties. Wolverine and Batman are usually portrayed to be in their forties. They're still out there kicking ass. They're still right. I wrote a sketch once for an SNL packet about Wolverine. Oh. Well, actually, I'm going to save this for the battle. But there are two guys in their forties that are still out there, kind of kicking ass and doing things, and and they're questionable badasses. They're not quite anti-heroes, but they're questionable. Sure. They have questionable methods. Yes. You know? And yes. that's become now a running joke in Marvel and DC. I think more so in DC about Batman. Yeah. Which Q gets real upset about. The, all the jokes about how Batman's a fascist now and all this stuff. <laughs> really? Q doesn't care for those, okay. those jokes. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, but um, I, I, I would imagine there's probably similar jokes being made now about Wolverine and Marvel about how he's kind of like... You know, what's with this guy? He seems a little uh, well, who's too taking, masculine. Or, who's taking you know? what today? Well, uh, I'm taking, uh, let's make it clear that I love both. Right. Okay. But I, I, I am, uh, I'm taking Wolverine. Okay. I'm rocking Wolverine. Right. Right there. He's on your you show know? right there. Where, yeah. Yeah. Wherever he is. 
And I don't know what what if you don't have any Batman shirts to rock or anything. Nothing. I don't need to wear a shirt to win a battle. Okay. All right, let's do this, man. I'll tell you. I'll know, tell you. I'll uh, tell you. See, that's, the, that's the attitude you need on the mic, man. That's <laughs> a, you know. You haven't heard me. My on the name mic. is Joe, oh, and I'm heard. here to say I don't need a Batman T-shirt. What did you hear? I heard the Prince Paul episode. You spit a, a little couplet that was dope. I, I did. It was good. You were something about. Um, Are you really? Do you really think it was dope? Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> it, it was a good. It was good rhyme, like a multisyllabic rhyme structure, which was great. It Thank wasn't you. the Fred Flintstone rap. It was something that was more. Remember, I sent you that beat. You st- I, I do. Still, yeah, it, yeah. He sent me a beat, a Star Wars beat, and it's uh, you know, it's it's great because Star Wars is my. I know. You know that's what I sent it to you. Yeah, no, and I love it, but I just don't want to get sued. By, you know Let's what I mean? put it out for free. They can't sue us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. Right. yeah, we can. All right. Well, maybe you get around to it in the fourth year after I send it to you. <laughs> Listen, folks. <laughs> I said it during lockdown. Stick around, stick around a little longer and you'll get more of that. <laughs> I said it during lockdown. I was <laughs> like, we, we got nothing to do. Here's a beat I made once. He goes, I love it. I go, great. Never heard anything. The- <laughs> But the arrogance to think that he wants to rap with you. I don't know. He did He did a... He was doing all kinds of stuff. He filmed a video on his you, couch. So you didn't take the radio... You didn't take the four years of radio silence as a hint? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, a little bit of a hint. <laughs> that should be the name that. of... That should be what you rap over that beat. Radio he, silence is the name of the it track. Sh- it should be called... That's a great title for a track, Radio Silence. Mm. He is a very nice guy. I feel like he is a nice enough guy where he wouldn't tell you, like, dude, I don't like it. But you did tell me uh, they were sampling I, John Williams. How can't I like it? Okay, it's like you're you're looping perfection. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And yeah. It's like, oh wow. I mean, this is great. It hits me right here. You heard it here first, folks. He's yeah. gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, he's just getting Prince Paul to add a few touches to it, and we'll uh, it'll be a, a triumvirate. Uh, okay. Can I tell you where I see this oh, going? Sorry. Yeah. So I think just I think you would agree, Batman is the bigger name yes. of the two and probably more widely known to the non comic book aficionado so there is some weight that comes along with you choosing batman here but i will say i think the the lion's share of people probably understand who they both are and i think you're going to get a lot of i think wolverine's going to win and i think you're going to get a lot of wolverine literally you're going to hear about the adamantium you're going to hear about his healing powers and you're going to hear that Batman is a billionaire who who pay who has a tricked out suit, and I and I and I think that you're not. I mean, we we, we phrase it as badass, and I and I for me, I think that you have the heavy lifting to do. Uh, I think you are right about some of what you said. Uh, I think Batman does carry a lot more. Just naturally, I'm doing this so I don't forget and leave it on the floor, but I don't want to put it in this. That's good. Do a doodle now. I just, I'm a, f- <laughs> I got nervous I was going to leave a you. food wrapper on the floor and it All just right. made me very nervous. I'm well, sorry. We'll I'm take, trying to respect we'll your take care office. of it after the live show. I'm afraid I was going to forget oh. that, hence the term forget. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we, uh, <laughs> it's no. just like when parents get, don't feel uncomfortable when we argue. Oh, like no, no, our, no. our bickering is part of it. I just looked over him and he was like this. I'm like, oh yeah. man, no, we're like two parents. Well, bickering. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, he's <laughs> launching into this point. He's starting to, to oh, pontificate yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's like, let me crank, uh, crack this water bottle. Yeah. It's so, <laughs> so, and the guests usually do side with Sal more than me. Okay. It's my lot in life. I don't care. It's my cross to bear. That's a three. That's a three PO line. Yeah, the, uh, line. yeah, yeah. It is. Uh, the um, no, I think that Batman does have the more immediate fandom, uh, or or the wider breadth of fandom. But I think people are a little DC annoyed at the moment. I think they're a little Batmaned out. And Wolverine's got a lot of nice heat right now because there's a, now uh, Jackman is the 87th guy to say I'll never play the character again is coming back now. He is? In Deadpool 3 uh. to play Wolverine again. So there's a lot of cool kid steam on Wolverine right now. You know. So anyway, let's start the battle and let's go. Uh, ready? Yeah. Time two. B A T T L E buds. <laughs> I will open with my argument okay. that Wolverine is not a badass. He's a man going through a midlife crisis. He walks around with his shirt half buttoned. He's got uh, mutton chops. He rides a motorcycle. He always has a cigar. The only thing he's missing is a Maxim magazine peeking out of his back pocket. <laughs> Wolverine is a corny uncle that still goes to the club. Like, hey, girls, what's going 
<laughs> you know, anybody need me to buy alcohol? He's the creep that would buy the 16-year-old girl's beer. That's who Wolverine is. That's my opinion. Well, X-23, who is his sidekick, is a 16-year-old girl, I think. Okay, yeah. well, there you go. Yeah, and it's, he's not going through a midlife crisis because he was born in the 1800s. Okay. If you know your stuff, all right? Like 1883. So, so I he's think just, he's plus, just upholding old traditions of yeah, having sex you know, with underage a, women. No, 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 no. <laughs> he's just, he does he, They fight crime together or they, you know, they're just on a, a bloodthirsty melee. Right. Uh, uh -huh. Just a, a death orgy. Can you okay. go back to that thing you just had right before this one? This is uh, on the internet. Who is okay. a better fighter, Batman or Wolverine? Okay. We got Wolverine is stronger, much faster, approximately as skilled, can only be taken out by a few specific methods due to his adamantium and regeneration, and can cut just about anything. Batman has stealth good enough to evade Wolverine's enhanced senses and enough tech to hit above his weight class. Yeah. Does that say to you that they're saying Batman? No, I think they're saying it's a pretty fair fight. Okay. Yep. That this, that's what I wanted to convey is that Batman has a, has a mental ability. Batman beats Superman because he know he knew how to beat Superman. Well, he used kryptonite. Lex right. Luthor has been using that for a long time, too. But Batman's <laughs> IQ is, is supposed to be around 200. Right. Okay, so he's definitely the smarter And that's Wolverine's character. age. That, that's Wolverine's age, right. Right. And, and Wolverine, I mean, you have to kind of take the environment, if they are fighting, into question. You know what I mean? Like, if you're fighting in a warehouse... With a bunch of like shipping containers, Batman could operate much more effectively in stealth mode, right? Yeah. But if you're fighting like in the streets, put him in a prairie. Yeah, yeah. No, it <laughs> is. Yeah, so, yeah, Wolverine's coming out with the claws and going right at you. Like, you know, the perfect analogy for this battle, in yeah. my opinion, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome when he fights when Mad Max has to fight Master Blaster. Wolverine is Master Blaster. Mad Max is Batman. Sure. W Wolverine is all brute strength. I'm coming directly at you, and I'm going to clobber you and tear you apart. That's all I know how to do. Yep. All I know how to do is hit. I can't express my thoughts. I can't use my words. I only know violence. <laughs> Batman is Mad Max, where he's like, I got a little whistle that can throw you off your game because I know your weakness. I use my hooks to get up to the top of this thing and then rappel down. Yeah. I, but based on the two things you just said, though, because we're not doing who would win in a fight, and based on those two descriptions you just said for each of them, it sounded like Wolverine is the bigger badass. He's not, and here's why. Mm -hmm. Let's just talk plain clothes, everyday life. Who do you want to hang out with? The guy in the leather jacket with the mutton chops that drives up on his Harley, or the guy that comes in the Maserati in the three-piece suit that gets out of the car with three different Well, women? I don't attach value to material objects. <laughs> that's right, <laughs> Sal. So, yeah. That's you, right. One of those guys. One of those guys shows up at your wedding rehearsal dinner. Who? who, who what are these you? scenarios? Wait, wait, wait. How does that equate to badass? <laughs> I'm saying a badass is a man that so, carries yeah. himself in any situation. So if Bruce Wayne uh, and is slick no matter what. So the guy out. with the mutton chops and the 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 adamantium claws that rides a motorcycle is not the badass. He's, and the guy who can afford lots of depends gadgets on, depends on what your de 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 definition of badass is. But well, my point is, there's a scenario where Wolverine walks through the door and you go, please get this guy out of here. What are we doing right now? There's no scenario where Bruce Wayne walks in and you go, this is a problem. Well, well Bruce the guy Wayne is refined. The guy is all class. He, he, he's classy. You know, he's not rough around the edges, but I don't know. I don't necessarily attach that to that. You see who's Wolverine more badass. punched in the face by Spock? Go back to that uh, pimp. I mean... <laughs> Look at that. I love that. <laughs> he lost I mean, That's smoke. just nonsense. I, 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 <laughs> he lost his Actually, check this out. Actually, it wasn't a fight. It was actually, it was one. Why does it say pinch? Oh, he, 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 um, he gave him the Vulcan. Oh, the he gave him the Vulcan. Oh, yeah, he gave yeah. him the Vulcan, and then all he said at the one Vulcan, and Wolverine's on the floor is, I trust I've made my point. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if... There's a, uh, a storyline called Enemy of the State. Okay. Um, it was written by Mark Millar. It's a Wolverine story. And Elektra found a way to defeat Wolverine. Wolverine was, like, uh, brainwashed by Hydra and the hand to be evil. Okay. And Hydra, uh, Elektra found a way to defeat him by taking the, her daggers or her, her size and put them right into his uh, deltoid. Like, put it right between the nerves so his healing factor couldn't... Uh, Help him as quickly. Okay. So she found a way to beat him like that. So I think that's what that this fictional Spock scenario was. And keep in mind, all that's fictional. The real right. Wolverine. Right, right. <laughs> right. It wouldn't happen. I would like to right. point this out. Is a, this is a one-off. I'd like to point novelty. out that Electra 
was played by Jennifer Gardner. So 13 going on 30 also took Wolverine down in a fight. <laughs> I'd like to put, I'd like to point that out right now. I don't, you know. Ben Affleck's sh- wife, mm. the woman Batman left. <laughs> wow. You're really coming. Yeah, wow. you're prepared for this. Yeah. Those dots. Oh, my. Uh, I didn't know Electra did that. That is very yeah, smart. Though. I saw Hugh Jackman out with J-Lo recently, so I don't know. Uh, did you? No, no, oh. I gotta, <laughs> what am I going to say here? I mean, I mean, if we're going with the actors, you know, I, I'm going with don't the let him no, I, Don't I, let him go. I'm going with the I'm just throwing shade. Yeah. All right. I, we're, going with, we're going with law. Yeah, he's going worried with. about Bruce Wayne coming to his uh, rehearsal dinner. Well, yeah. I'd keep Bruce Wayne the fuck out of my rehearsal dinner. I mean, he's just... Because you're going to scheme on yeah, your wife? Yeah, No, nah, he's got too much class, that guy. Too much class, yeah. But wait, let's actually talk about, though, it, 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 because this does tie into badass, because we we did a battle once on here, Luke Skywalker versus Han Solo. I was Han Solo, Sal was Luke. Luke won. I thought Han Solo would have taken it easily. Yeah. But part of that battle was the portrayal of the character. Like, who is like who is the cooler, more badass guy on, on screen? Now, Wolverine's at a disadvantage because far less people have portrayed him. Yep. But that also leaves the open door for far more bad people to portray Batman. Sure. So it goes in both directions. These, but, this is wild what you're showing me. Scrolls from the top. Him. Batman became a vampire and killed Dracula. Batman defeated the Predator. Yes. Yeah. Ayatollah Khomeini appointed the Joker ambassador of Iran. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know that? <laughs> that's in the Dark Knight Returns. I don't remember that. No, no, okay. <laughs> that's from the. That's got to be from the the Joker, like nineteen, like there was the, there was the Joker uh, solo. Did you ever read the? Oh uh, no, that's uh, so, no, I'm wrong. I'm got the wrong timeline. Never mind. But Batman's beating up the Predator, and uh, he can't be beaten. It just who who can't be beaten? Batman. A Wolverine can't be beaten. Wolverine cannot. But be you beaten. just said he could. Electra beat him in that one little scenario, right? Which because he was already he was he was brainwashed by Hydra. I mean, they needed to have ba- an ending for that story. Batman defeated the Incredible Batman Hulk. Batman beat Bane. Batman beat Bane. Bane broke Batman's well, back though. But Bane. But then yes. Batman came back and beat him. Yeah. But like, here's the thing. Let's talk about portrayals on screen. Okay. There's been a lot of lousy Batmans. Yes. But <laughs> Batman was termed homosexual. <laughs> That's got to be where that, ambiguous. Is the that the guy that left? Is that from? the yeah. psychologist that? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's a shocker. Um, uh, on screen, Hugh Jackman is is great. Yeah, yeah. And great. I would say your two great Batmans on screen are now the Nolan movies are my favorites, but I don't think Bale is the best Batman. I think that, in fact, I don't, I love Bale as Wayne. Bale's, I don't like his Batman voice, but I like those movies. I think your two best Batmans are Keaton and uh, Affleck to me is the greatest ever Batman. (laughs) Really? I think, yeah. Are you laughing at that? I'm laughing, yes, because he doesn't have enough, I don't feel like he established himself. I I think he looks great as Batman. Right. And I think he's, he's, I think he's a good Batman. All right. Right. I like Robert Pattinson as Batman. I I hated that movie in ways I can't even put into words. And Didn't I, we talk about we that? We did, yeah. We yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, we I, went back I, and forth about it. Yeah. I liked it for what it was as a really dark. You dark. like a more Fiona Apple style Batman. <laughs> uh, a weak. <laughs> no, no, see, no, Bags no. under his he eyes. Went weak. Weak. He went into the Iceberg Lounge, beat up the bouncers, went and intimidated Penguin, uh, who is played by. What's his name? Intimidated Penguin. Yeah, shoot, uh, Colin Farrow. Yeah, Colin Farrow. has got a spinoff show coming up, which is going to be great on HBO Max. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I love I love an interpretation of a peng, of the Penguin where he looks like he shops at Men's Warehouse. I mean, they took all the ass out of these characters in that movie. Oh no, I don't. But think this so. is that movie. This I've is heard it. the movie was uh, pretty polarizing. I've heard people that loved it and hated I, I it. Hated yes, it I've so argued much. with a lot of people yeah. about it. I uh, I might have some attachment to it because I went to see it with my son. And this is the first time you got to see a, a, a Batman movie on the big screen, like a new bat. You know what I mean? He's right. 14 now. So there was a lull in Batman movies for a long time. Right. And then we went to see that, and he loved it. So I was like, you know what? I love it, too. So that, that I'm might not be surprised a, you love it because it speaks to, like, the 14-year-old <laughs> angsty mind. Like, you know what I mean? Like, but you can get back to that, that angsty mind when you were 14 and see it for what it is. I know? saw. I saw. I, and I love, the, the, I love Adam West. I love, I love I love Michael I Keaton. Love. I, I, I Who's am the just worst? Grateful. Is it Val Kilmer? I would say Clooney. Uh, Clooney. 
Clooney, you know, and but they had only, the nerve to put him cartoonish. in the flash. At the end. Yeah. Spoiler I alert. thought that was very funny, though. Yeah, but I wanted it to be Bale. Uh, there, there was. I can guarantee you, there is no way Christopher Nolan is ever going to let that version of Batman Out be of tarnished yeah. with anything goofy. Yeah, yeah, but, but no, Clooney and Kilmer. I think Clooney's the worst Batman. I Not love the one with the suit had nips. Yeah, but aside from any of that, I'm a huge George Clooney fan. I love George Clooney. He's too George Clooney when he's in the suit. So like when he's talking in the suit, you're like, that's George Clooney. There is no separation. Keaton, right. even Kilmer, who's not one of my favorite Batmans, they do a separation like when they get into the suit and they become different. Like Keaton, Keaton said some of his movement had just has to do with how the suit would let him move. But Keaton is different in the suit. It was one of the only gripes I had about the, his portrayal of Batman again in The Flash was he didn't do the separation anymore. He, yeah. there were, like when he was in the bat jet talking, he just was like, I'm going down. And I was like, he just sounds like Michael Keaton right now. He's not like locking yeah. into it. But Affleck to me is like, so he's what it should look is, like. Is, he's is the, is the attitude, the reason, he's every part of it to me. Is yeah. the reason you know? they adopt that that growl, is that is that just so th that he's not recognized as? It's kind of like yeah. Clark so Kent's it, glasses. It, it's an effect yeah. on purpose. So when Ben Affleck is like, I will be there. Man. It's, he's doing that so yeah. no one's like, it's freaking yeah. Bruce Wayne. Yeah, uh, that's why that that's that's why that voice got made fun of so much because they're like Pete Holmes did a sketch about it where yeah. or, where he's like out of all the voices this is what you chose like you know right. like you could have done so many but anyway Affleck's version of Batman I know this isn't his call but they had the best justification of that they had the suit had a a voice. Uh, like okay. distorter in it, okay. so it dropped his voice in octave. and that was only in that movie, and the not even in the comic book ever? ever. Yeah, well, I don't know about that, no. but they only ever did it in the movies. In that one, I was like, yeah. "Duh!" Like that's so smart. Yeah, and you to think Darth Vader had the same thing, you know, thirty <laughs> years ago. You know, yeah, 40 years. yeah. But no. I mean, look, you got Wolverine in a guinea tea on a Harley. Oh, take it easy. That's a slur. with a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. Cigar, cigar with Which chops makes a difference. When, it makes a difference that it's I mean, a cigar. Just, I don't know, man. Like, I just feel like when when Wolverine is like, okay, there's that outfit, but then there's also just like when he's not in that outfit, right? I mean, let's and talk about that him. outfit. He's still him. Let's talk about the but original with, with outfit. But with Batman, he has to get into the outfit to be badass, you know? It's true. Yeah. Well, that, that's, that's he's it. badass Let's I, not I, 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 square one. Let's not. He's sort of badass at square one. His claws, don't forget... Were put into his body against not his claws, but the adamantium, the metal that was put into him against his will. Without that metal inner exoskeleton thing, whatever the hell it's called, he has bone claws, and they break, and he's weaker. He's a lot weaker. So a lot of what Wolverine is, but, I mean, the, but you well, can a apply lot that what, to any superhero. No, no, no. But yeah. here's Take the thing: the power. a lot of what makes Wolverine a badass is not a natural power; it's a gadget that's in his body. It is a suit, essentially, in his body. Batman has a suit. Wolverine's powers are not like Superman's powers, where hey, it's like Superman wore a cape. You know what I mean? Right? Am I am I wrong? Well, Superman's an alien, right? But Wolverine's <laughs> a, a mutant. But you get what I'm saying. Wolverine has a Batman style enhancement with that adamantium. Sure. Yeah. But he doesn't have all the, the smoke pellets and the, right, the gadgetry no. that that Bruce Wayne or that no, Batman would have. He doesn't have a, a butler. He doesn't have a, a weapons guy, man in the chair. He's got a kid. He's got a child. He's well, got Ro Wolverine oh, yeah, is a yeah. mutant. <laughs> yeah. Batman is a middle aged guy. Yeah. Right. Yeah, with a lo lot of heart, which I'll give to you. You know, he wants to go out and fight crime. His, his mm. parents uh died in crime. Spoiler alley. alert, guys. Yeah. <laughs> if you're watching, sorry. <laughs> yeah. That's Batman's way, parents die. <laughs> by the way, just wanna, I just don't want to. By the way, you want to talk badass? Who's got a more badass origin story? The guy who witnessed his parents get murdered and then devoted his life to learning to live in the shadows and fight crime, or the fop from 1801 <laughs> that, <laughs> that got into an accident and somehow can't age past 42? I mean, yeah. what's the better story? Well, I I think. I think Batman, he does have a better origin story. All right. You know, but you can argue that, that Wolverine, coming from Canada, getting subjected to the Weapon X program, going through all the torture and torment, having these memories 
put into his brain of stop? serving in the military. Can I stop I think you? you've been speaking enough. I, I, yeah. I, 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 I mean, I can't, get a, I can't get a word there in. There we go. Uh, you know, I mean, that's right. You stand your ground yeah, right He's got to win the argument because he doesn't stop. That's no, no. right. Can, oh, I yeah. put, can, oh, we, can we, I just put one we, thing we, out? Yeah. His tactics? Forget it. Him, yeah. being, him being from Canada ain't helping your bad oh, yeah. argument. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I wanted to say. Go ahead. Okay. No, right, right, right. Well, okay. well you know, I, I mean, that is from a fictional city. You know, and Wolverine's from an actual country. You know what I mean? Fiction and... <laughs> oh, wow, that's you know? true too. You, uh, and I hate arguing against Batman because I love Batman. I love the whole DC. So I don't know why you hate Marvel though. I don't get. I don't get that. How can you just hate the entire I, brand? I don't like any. I don't like any modern. There's very little in modern comics that I like mm -hmm. anymore. Not just content wise. I don't like the art style. Ever since it went to the digital drawings and all that, I just it looks too shiny and it's just not interesting to me anymore. So, so I'm not big on any real new comics, okay. uh, but uh, Marvel, I have grown to strongly, strongly loathe because of the cinematic universe. I think that it's become bloated and gross, and it really annoys me how many actors are part of that thing that go online and talk about how much they hate Donald Trump, yet participate in the most capitalistic <laughs> empire ever created. It's oh. like cool kid shit. It's like, look how many famous people we fit into at this time, guy. It's too much. It's like, and it's all, I hate all the comedy in it. Everybody is Tony Stark now. It was, I, I was with them hardcore until Avengers 2. And in Avengers 2, I was like in the theater going, why is everybody talking like Tony Stark now? Like, why is Thor making these jokes? Those, that's not Thor. Oh, I see. And after that, Every Marvel movie was a comedy. I don't want to watch a Thor movie where Asgard is crumbling and Tahini, Sauce, Wakiti, whatever the fuck his name is, the guy that did What We Do in the Shadows, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. is doing a character going, and he's making like dumb jokes as the world is crumbling. Like there's, Wakiti? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I feel like Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one, which I think is the best movie of the entire MCU, okay. wow. set the tone for... People started seeing what James Gunn did and said, actually, this is the formula because he was able to bring, you know, a, uh, a tree, a talking raccoon and just, you know, obscure characters sure. from, from Marvel and make them sure. household names. Of course, you know, and, and put Chris Pratt on a different different stratosphere. But the comedy element combined with the, the rock, the soundtrack and everything, I think that pushed that that. It's it, great in Guardians was, that of the was, Galaxy. Was, uh, yeah. was, was Guardians one before um, – uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds. Uh, Deadpool? Deadpool? Yeah. It, I think Deadpool came out after. Mm. Deadpool's awesome. Yeah, yeah Deadpool's And here's great. why Deadpool's awesome. Deadpool is legitimately funny, and the comedy is inherent to the character. Yep. And Ryan Reynolds sells it. What Marvel did and everything else, you're right, they saw Guardians of the Galaxy, they go, this is what you do, and it's like, well, now every character is the same. Yeah. I have a bigger gripe with Marvel, though, and you're not going to like this. Okay. They took... They just steal from... I mean, DC did it all first. I know you're going to get mad, but it's true. Uh, give, uh, well, give me some examples, and then I... Uh, uh, Dark Side was, was preceded Thanos. Thanos. Uh, Doom Thanos. Patrol. It's pronounced Thanos. Thanos, sorry. Sorry, I didn't go to a <laughs> nerd school. <laughs> you didn't? <laughs> I didn't. No, I used, to say, I used to say Thanos a lot, too, uh, before the movies came out. Doom Patrol. Patrol Victorian, buddy. Yeah. Doom Patrol preceded X-Men. Um... Uh, uh, Aquaman preceded Submariner. I don't know about that. It's true. No, I, I think Submariner preceded Deathstroke, Aquaman. Deathstroke preceded Deadpool. It, it's it, dude. It's one. The the whole parents dying thing. They just jacked it. The, Infinite Earths preceded Spider Verse and the multiverse in Marvel. DC did. Secret every, Wars came before Crisis on Infinite Earths, though. But as Secret as Wars was wasn't was in parallel universes. Right, but as in terms of a, a giant crossover, uh, that's what I, I. Fine, but 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 DC has taken or DC has done a lot first, and Marvel has you, jacked. You, and in fact, Stanley at times has been very kind of flippant about it. Hulk yeah. came after um, the thing. No, the thing is, Mom. I might be wrong. I, I, th I thought there was something. I, I, well, listen, I want to steady us for a second. Yeah, I want to steady us. I want to steady us because we're getting a little off topic, and we are nearing the end. And I'm, I've been eyeing down the phones, and I 
I mean, there is a ton of opinion here. Okay, There's let's no hit shortage it. of opinion here from these people. So let's it go looks to the like phones. Batman is losing right no, now. No, there's there's a, a okay. wide array. Wolverine was in Civil War and Wars, World Wars One and Two. That's a great. Wherever you point. were scrolling from before, pimp, there was just tons of shit. Just, I'm sure there's good good everywhere. But I was Wolverine reading this. Is Canadian upset. <laughs> Batman has all the superpowers as Elon Musk. Oh, shut up. Read it. All right. Sorry. Give me the real superhero, whatever that number is. Uh, this is hard. I do. This He's is hard. Right. I do there were so many good ones up top. Let's start, start, start a little closer to the top, but don't, don't show them. Picking Batman as the bigger badass is like saying it's hip to be square. No, it's not. Uh, both are badass. However, being badass is Wolverine only is Wolverine's only real character trait, so he should win. All right. Batman is a regular guy kicking ass. Wolverine has mutant powers. Batman is way more badass. Jo Batman all the way. Definitely misread this as who has the... Bi okay. Bigger ass. Uh, only a mutant... Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to find what common. is more badass than metal claws that come out of your hands? A rubber suit with nipples? Uh, nothing is more badass than metal claws coming out of your hand. Wolverine's hair is more badass than his. Wolverine needs claws, but Batman uses money and technology to do some real damage, and he's sort of a vigilante, so Batman has my vo okay. vote. Let's talk about a hell of a matchup. We talking badass have to go Batman. Wolverine gets the job done, but Batman's a bad MF. Yeah. Batman is just a rich dude with high-tech weapons. I, I, can I tell you just real quick? Can I tell you? Wolverine has no rules. How, Batman does. How That's much I hate that absorbed opinion about Batman. Like, I can't stand it. Pete Holmes made that joke 10 years ago. And it's like, it's just this become this absorbed opinion of like. It has, yeah. And I know. was afraid it was going to come up today. And, and I didn't want to have to rebuke it. or Not, not that it's to, to be rebuked. But I'm just, I, I, I agree. I'm tired of hearing that as an argument. And yeah. I didn't notice I didn't say that. Fourth pound of the episode. I, <laughs> I don't know what Wolverine's bank account looks like, but he could afford to go to the school for gifted youngsters. Wolverine is so badass. He made everyone believe the weird little badger that a Wolverine actually is is some kind of monstrous wolf creature. <laughs> That's very funny. Huge Batman fan, but Wolverine has literal skin and muscle tissue burn off only to painfully reject. That's a great point. And they did that in the in the Wolverine movie. Like you've seen Wolverine have his entire flesh burnt off, yeah, and then he grows it back. <laughs> like that's yeah. pretty awesome. Read that one right there. Love Batman. Love Batman. Literally my favorite hero, but he's not a badass as Wolverine. Wolverine has been through the ringer with that healing factor of his. I Batman, think Wolverine's going to take this. Batman, and it's not even close. With enough prep time, Batman could be the host of Taste Buds. Wolverine is just some angry, cool dude with metal claws and insane healing factor. Okay. Go, going from orphan to hero with no true superpowers or special abilities is pretty badass. Uh, Wolverine will eat Batman for breakfast. Ah, I mean, I, I think Wolverine's going to take this. What do you well, think? Uh, yeah, I, I think I think he will. You know, but but again, as as Sal established, it wasn't about who who could win in a fight. Right. It's about who you would want to take to your rehearsal dinner. It was the whole battle was based it. on if, if one of these guys showed up at your wedding's rehearsal dinner. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm thinking like we're in this big this big fight. You know, I, I want Wolverine on my team because he's just going right out, claws out, and he's just when I, more of a badass. I yeah. would say I would say as a closing argument. Look, anytime I play a Marvel video game, which there are many good ones. Yep. I, I I take Wolverine every time. Okay. Marvel versus Capcom, he's first guy onto the team. Yeah. Uh, the X-Men side scroller beat him up. He's the guy I go with. Yep. Uh, uh, what, whatever that game is where you can have the four guy team. Gauntlet? It's kind of like Gauntlet. No, it <laughs> Gauntlet. looks like Gauntlet actually, but it's super, it's yes. super heroes. What is that? Marvel hero? Uh, whatever the hell it's called. Yeah. Wolverine's on the team every okay. time. My point is, is I go with Wolverine. Time and time again in that setting. But if you told me, hey, buddy, we're going to put you up against another enemy. We're not going to tell you who the enemy is, but you have to pick your ally first. There's no way you're not picking Batman. Ooh, I don't know. There's, it, because you got to remember, it might not just be a physical fight. 
Right. And once you take physical out of it, which is why I'm saying the video game thing, yeah, you got some problems with Wolverine. What's he going to do? He's going to sit there and complain. He's like me. He acts like me. <laughs> I mean, Wolverine. <laughs> do you want that around? Do you want that around? You're fucking. That's not good for morale. <laughs> Wolverine, I guess it's true. He has a motorcycle, but he doesn't have his own mobile. Wolverine. Right. Or plane. I'm sure Hot Wheels has made a, a Wolverine mobile at one point. But, uh, yeah. All right. All so right. we're going to go to uh, wait, wait, Humble let, Pie. Let, 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 oh, so, please. Oh. Uh, plug plug away, please, before we oh, do this. Okay. Yeah, my closing your... argument is that, uh, oh, what, what do you mean? Plug oh, our face or plug? You can do yeah. a closing argument and then plug whatever you want to plug. No, I thought Batman was great in the Lego movie. <laughs> All right, and he had a good had a little spinoff. Um, Will Arnett, another yeah, great yeah, Batman. Yeah, yeah. All right, good. Uh, yeah, nah, I'm uh, I'm plugging Zarfa. Is that we talking no, about? No, oh, do, you can do a that. closing argument and then plug. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. and I, I take Wolverine. That's my argument. <laughs> These guys argued for me. <laughs> <laughs> and, All right. And, uh, yeah, and uh, you can find me on Instagram at Zarface underscore E S O. So C Z A R. F-A-C-E underscore E-S-O. And uh, I want to thank both of you guys, all three of you guys, for having me uh, having me on the show. It's oh, been a dude, pleasure. Thank you for giving us your time. Yeah. yeah Come dude, on. Sure. So cool to have you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, go buy their records, guys, please. Go I definitely I definitely wanted to argue about burritos, but... Um, so you got to come back. But I'll come back. I'll be happy to come back. <laughs> yeah, come back, man. I don't know if we've even done a burrito. I don't think we might not have. I got oh. smoked because I argued against it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there you go. Well, we can always put it up against someone. Right. You're always welcome back, uh, brother. Thank you. All right. So here we, we go. Here? Right, let's see. Pie. We got about 5,000 votes here, and uh, Pimp is going with Wolverine. Drum. Oh, holy, holy shit. shit. Oh, my God. Ah. Holy shit. Wow, holy that's a close one. Holy shit. Now, <laughs> with something that is, th I mean, we are 0.4% away from each other. With something this close, I usually like to, let's just, just for fun, check back because it, it's a 24-hour poll and then it closes. Right. Yeah. So 24, like, so tomorrow at this time. Actually, let me log on real that, quick. Um, it is, it <laughs> is. <laughs> you might tip okay, it right now, my buddy. I mean, it, it is, is. It is 50.3 50, 50 Batman yes. to 49.7 Wolverine. Is that the closest? It's the second closest ever. What was we had closest? one tie. We had a one tie. One legit tie. And that, I think, is the second closest battle we have ever had out of the 160 battles or whatever it is. 140 battles. Holy that is an, I can't even. That means it's a great battle. When yeah. it's down the line like that. Yeah. Dude, that's point four, point three. It's a point three. What am I saying? It's it's a point. It's three tenths of a point different. That's yeah. wild. Isn't and that insane? Pip, refresh it and see if it uh, see if it uh, changes. I wonder if. Ooh, Ooh, okay, it's, it's getting it's getting more point four now. Yeah, but honestly, I, I, I bet you that was up and down. I wonder if because I don't think necessarily Batman had. Oh wait a minute. Why is Wolverine? Ch oh, that's who you voted for. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, why is Wolverine checked? No, I thought that too. Yeah. It's Holy that's who voted. shit! Well, that is sick. But we do have till tomorrow. Yeah, I honestly, well, or you just close it now. We close it now, but okay. you know, yeah. you should look tomorrow because yeah, if it switches the other way, you can hang that over his head for permanently. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, man. We always end with, uh, "I still love you." Yeah, and you got to say, "I love you too." <laughs> I do. I, I'm Wolverine would never say that. <laughs> <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I love you too, man. Awesome. Batman would be like, no, really, I really love you. That's awesome. Great episode. Taste buds. They come into the mic. Talking about the food they hate. Talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds, man, yeah, they come into the mic.